DC. What are you saying about DC in uh, Rockhold, Harrington? I see it in here. I don't want to bring it up, but I feel like you're trying to stir the pot, talk a little shit, but please go ahead. You know, a couple fans brought it to my attention, so even if I wanted to avoid this one, I couldn't. Uh, DC was on his show with Ariel Hawani yesterday, and he said, you know, he's really excited to get back home to the gym at AKA. Uh, he said, unfortunately, some guys won't come in to train with him, uh, namely Luke Rockhold, said he won't risk his injured shoulder to train with DC, and he thinks it might have something to do with the fact that he's been pretty chummy with you lately. Whoa, who thinks that? DC thinks that? Yeah. I've lost for words. Wow, Bisping. Wow, fucking Yoko Ono, Bisping over here, just breaking up the band. I mean, that, that's a stretch. I don't think DC really thinks that. He's just saying that to be funny. I mean, listen, me and DC, I, I've worked for him for years. Started off at Fox Sports, then for the UFC, and now ESPN. Now we're commentating together. And we have a great time. DC's fucking awesome. He's an awesome human being. Great fighter. Wishing the best in his fight. But at the same time, also, we're not like best mates. You know, we're not calling up on each other every day. We're not meeting up for dinners and all that type of stuff. We're not. We're not. In fact, the last time Rockhold and DC were together, they all went off on a Friday night. They were trying to invite me out with them, right? They're like, come on, we're coming out for a few drinks. And I was like, oh, you want to? Go on, DC what? and Rockhold? Well, DC. DC is like, come on, we're going out. I got this guy. Uh, he's one of my sponsors. When we were in Raleigh, and he's like, we're going to go out. You know, with my sponsor. He's, you know, rolls big, yada, yada, yada. We'll have a great time. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And then, like, who's going to be there? He said, well, me and Rockhold and you. <laughs> I'm like, nah, not going to happen. Not because I've got any kind of problem, but we, you know, we're fine. But, you know, a little alcohol goes down the pipe, you know, next minute, you know, maybe it's the either one of two party. things. It's either you guys become Hoggy. fucking best friends or it's a real problem. It's yeah. going to be an extreme. It's, it's going to uh, either way, because that's almost like what happened with Masvidal. Like you and Masvidal fucking hated each other. And then you guys got together, hung out one night. And that was that. Well, no, listen, it wouldn't be a real fucking problem. It's your bing, bing, bosh. You're there, down he goes again. Do you know what I mean? There ain't no real problem. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, on a Friday night before commentary, you know, I'm not looking to go out and get into a fight with Luke Rockhold. Do you know what I mean? It's not the most professional behavior. Anyway, to my point, uh, it's not like we're best mates like that. So I think DC is just having a bit of fun. But if uh, if that isn't the case, sorry, that's my dad FaceTiming. Uh, if that isn't the case, then... Uh, Come on, Rockhold, lighten up, buddy. That's one of your best oldest friends. Come on. Yeah. Well, Luke, Luke does not like you. He's got you really. What it is? What, I don't know what it is. Like because you even like with Tim Kennedy and Luke, like your attitude is sort of like you're like ah, what are you gonna do? Water under the bridge. <laughs> they fucking hate you. You really rub them. I mean, Luke, look, you took his title. Never. Yeah. Really- you know, really I mean, well, well, well I don't know. I feel sorry for him in some ways, but anyway, they, I don't want to dwell on that too long. I was just kind of curious as to what that was, Harrington. I saw it in the notes. George had sent out a tweet to me. I sent George a text message. I end up on the phone with a mutual friend. So I'm going to continue this story by saying I talked to Masvidal, but in, in fairness, talked to another guy and George talked to him back, and so that's how we talked to each other. But Masvidal was annoyed. Masvidal was annoyed with me because I had put out a piece along the lines a couple of weeks ago, but along the lines of, hey, George, zip it and just go fight. And he didn't like that. He's going, hey, wait a minute. Where's that coming from? This is my business. This is my deal. And I think that you should support me and so should everybody else. Okay. We're similar to saying the same thing. The fan in me is coming out. I've seen every one of George Masvidal's fights, whether they were in the UFC or some smaller promotion, all the way to backyard stuff that I watched on YouTube. But if Masvidal has competed, I have seen it. I will continue to see. I'm a fan. There is a little bit more, though, to my contention of Masvidal. Go do this. Look, if you want to be a world champion, you have to be given the opportunity to fight for the championship. That is a very hard thing that you cannot just earn your way to. There is no competitive architecture within combat sports, boxing as well, that gets you to a world title fight. There are commonalities that other 
number one contenders had, and therefore people will identify those commonalities and come out and say, if you do this and you do this and you do this, you'll fight for a championship. They will largely be right. But I am also right to tell you, you cannot just go earn it. You cannot just kick certain doors in, flip certain tables over and beat certain people and be guaranteed it. Tell Matt Brown, who won seven straight. Tell Damian Maya, who won seven straight. Tell Leon Edwards, who won eight straight. That's just not how it works. It's just not. It takes a little bit more. And a lot of it has to do with timing and opportunity and somebody that says yes. Okay. Excuse me, but once we understand those things, then you do have a big question of, do you want to fight for the championship? Masvidal was the fighter of the year with a meteoric rise. That is a quote that was used on ESPN, which means it's official, quite frankly. Something is said about a sports athlete on the worldwide leader, that becomes the official statement. I don't know that Masvidal could duplicate a year like he just had. I just don't know that he could. There was a lot of opportunities there. From changing the weight class all the way to the dramatic piece of theater with three pieces of soda with Leon. All the way down to the flying knee, all the way down to being called out in California by Nate Diaz who anointed him the challenger in that fight to being placed in the Mecca with the rock coming, with the belt on. Like, look, there was a lot that happened there that no matter how good you are or how many more fights you go on and win, I don't know that you could duplicate. And uh, I spoke to Amanda Nunes last week, and she said that she was contemplating a retirement, you know? That's not true. That's not what I heard. That's not, that's not what I heard. I, was I like, heard that she was just saying, you know, I've achieved everything. I, I've done this. I've done that. That she's not really contemplating retirement. She's saying, what's next for me? Well, I did like a one-hour interview. And well, you would know better, because there's definitely no language barrier between <laughs> you two. So yeah, I'm maybe the language barrier is between me and her. I doesn't explain, like she was saying that, you know, she contempl she already achieved everything in her life, that she doesn't see like, you know, challenges right now. And uh, she was happy with the UFC financially, it was nothing about money as well. It seems like it's a, it's a place where she is right now because of her family. The thing that makes me laugh is when, 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 when people say, oh, I'm pissed off about financially or whatever, I'm gonna retire. Do you guys not get pissed off at work? I'm sure you guys get pissed off at work a lot. Are you going to fucking retire? No. Why? You can't retire. These guys can retire. She can retire. You know, a lot of these guys can retire. Um, you know, I hope she doesn't. You know, she's one of my favorite people ever. And uh, coming off the performance that she just put on, you know, I think that the beautiful thing was she, she, uh, she, she came out of the... Um, Duran May fight and everybody was like oh she looked human this that you know all the critics were all over she fought the pro you know arguably the best female striker of all time beat her and uh, she looked human in that fight then she came out and put a statement uh, on, on her last performance she looked incredible and put on an absolute clinic against one of the toughest women I've ever seen in my life and uh, after a performance like that I, I would hate to think that she would want to retire but you know, if that's true and that's where she's at right now, then then she probably should. I was just curious to see, like, if you if you talk to her and if you you know are planning on talking to her and soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that girl. We'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it and we'll we'll see what's up. I'm just gonna give her some time. Yeah, you know, she they're having a baby and you know she's got a lot of cool things going on in her life. I think I think she's at the point now. You know, she's got a lot of money and she's probably starting to enjoy herself and you know. Um, Everything changes when you, when you got a lot of money. I'm looking forward to it. Again, it's a big opportunity to even fight Max. You know, some people say, does he deserve the rematch? I don't care. This is a fight I want. I need this fight. For me, I need this fight. For my legacy, I need this fight. You know what I mean? Uh, to, for me to really uh, put myself in a, in, a, in a good position and, and let everyone know, you know, this is what needs to be done. This is the fight I want. So, uh, you know, there was times where my team were like, you know, what fight should we want? And then I end up saying, I want Max. You know, that's what's going to get thrown at us anyway. Give me Max. Again, I've got something to prove, you know what I mean? You know, whatever. But I can't wait, man. I'm, I'm stoked. I've got a new motivation. It's weird, you know what I mean? I'm using it as fuel. It looks like I'm 
you know, I'm worrying about what people are saying. And but I mean, I'm using that as fuel. I've got this, uh, you know, obviously I fought for my family, but now I've got something to prove as well. So no one's taking that belt away from my kids. I guarantee you that. And not just that, you know, now I've got this, I've got this new hunger. I've got this new fire in the belly, and I'm like smashing pads, hitting harder than ever. You know, just hitting numbers on the on the assault bikes and everything. I'm just, I'm keen. I'm ready. Huh. You know, let's go, let's do it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's good. So I believe that I believe the timing is right, purely on that. And uh, I appreciate the passion. I can feel it coming through the screen here. And I should correct myself. I said June 11th at the beginning of that question. Obviously, it's July 11th in uh, in Abu Dhabi. I I I saw an article um, about you. You did an interview with ESPN.com in Australia recently, and you you mentioned a lot of the things that you just mentioned now. And it seems like you are feeling like disrespected you you it's almost like you have this chip on your shoulder and usually when you're the when you're the hunted as opposed to the hunter you can kind of chill you're at the top of the mountain but why does it feel like i'm talking to a contender right now as opposed to the champ why are you so riled up do you do you really feel like people have not given you your due since you won that title man at the end of the day you're always going to get this you know there's always going to be haters there's always going to be people that doubt and you know you which i don't mind i'm all about that this sport's a, a, a crazy sport man I knew what I got into when I first come in. So for me, you know, it's not really getting to me. But again, it's 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 giving me motivation. It's giving me, you know, a, a focus. It's giving me a drive. It's giving me it's giving me a goal. I got a new goal. Not you know, last time I needed to win, win that belt. Right now, it's more than that. Just beating Maxi isn't enough. I'm going to go out there and show everyone how much better I am. You know, I mean, show everyone just who, you know the the fighter I can be. You know, I can beat anyone. Give me a full camp. I can beat anyone. I'm better than all the fighters in my division, hands down. But, you know, now I'm proving something different.